check it out guys that's the Statue of Liberty way over there there's Manhattan Freedom Tower I guess I'm at Bush Park is that right Bush Terminal Park Bush Terminal Park okay I'm here with Jonathan from Green Path Electric Bikes in Brooklyn you've been with the company for like what five and a half years yeah that's five. longer than I've even been riding e-bikes man yes, old school <laughs> you're expert yeah you came out with me today to check out the new Go Cycle G3 Oh, you've also got the G2, so I thought this was a really neat opportunity to see them both side by side, talk about the differences. I was gonna just run through the specs real quick like I do with the G3 and then maybe link back up with you and get some help. Okay. Does that sound all right? That's right. Yeah, you know, I remember when this GT G2 Generation 2 launched, I met uh, the guy who, who started the company. I guess he left McLaren in 2002 and then 2009 he did a G1. I've never seen that one, but like 2012 he did the G2 and now you know 2016 2017 we got g3 incremental upgrades all along um, just a really interesting bike uh, damon was telling me earlier he's the guy that owns green path that this uses marine grade parts like a lot of stainless hardware and stuff and i, I guess the frame is actually extruded magnesium so it's super light and it's got the ride characteristics of carbon fiber but with a, a lesser environmental impact so just re a lot of thought has gone into this thing only comes in one frame size but it does come in now four colors before I think it was white uh, gray I don't know gray and uh, black black dude expert thank you thank you and now there's a new one that's like electric blue or something so we got the white here which is really visible frequently I'm like yeah you know white's a great color because it's reflective from all the sides it increases your visual footprint we got reflective sidewall stripes and this new light tube headlight okay and they're really excited about this on the website it's like yeah you know uh, daytime running lights are required in the EU we should have them for bicycles and so they put this on the way it works is there's little LEDs at the end of this and they face inward and there's this reflective background material it's really bright and you can adjust that by shifting forward on on that little grip shifter thing here on the left if you twist that back, it gives you throttle, but only when you're pedaling. You have to be pedaling first, and that's something that dealers can shut off, because we are in New York City. New York City has the law where it's like class one, pedal assist only. So it's neat that you can do that. We've actually got the app. We'll check that out a little bit later. Everything on this bike is just, it's like seamless. If you look at this display, it reminds me of how from Space Odyssey, where it's all like the, the lights like go back and forth and it's kind of like what would you like you know and it's it's definitely what is that like human computer interaction different kinds of designs uh, interface between the pedaling and the bike working with you and automatically shifts and uh it just uh no brainer when you're riding this bike yeah it's you're, you're totally right shifting is something that either happens on its own based on how fast you're going or you can control over here by shifting the right one up a little bit and I think it's put itself to sleep I need to move the bike again but there are three speeds it's an internally geared hub back here and you can hear the wires like going zzz, zzz, zzz. I guess it would be servos clean drive that's referring to this enclosure here there is a chain but they've actually added some padding on the wall so that if you're putting this bike sideways and, and packing it oh he got it hey do it again yeah very cool very cool so back here that's where the gears are three speeds very clean the the chain isn't exposed or anything you don't have to worry about mashing or any of that because we've got uh direct drive is what he was saying so maybe it's not internally geared i, I can't see it i don't see any labeling i i suppose this is maybe just a i don't know i i was actually talking to the gentleman who runs the company earlier today trying to get all the details and he was like yeah no direct drive so usually will you lift up the front of the bike real quick Jonathan just gently kind of yeah just like that a lot of times when they coast to a stop faster like that that means that there's some cogging this is a brand new bike so that might just be because it's a now let's do the back wheel same thing so when I spin this yeah much much smoother so I think yeah that must be correct it's not internally geared it's rated between 250 and 500 watts, depending on where you're at, the software might be slightly different. We're in America where you can go up to 750 watts versus in Europe, it's like, eh, you're kind of limited to 250. This bike can accommodate that, of course. They sell it worldwide. Top speed in America, 20 miles per hour-ish. You can maybe even go a little faster with the 
the interface, but they're updating that. So last time I reviewed the bike, the G2, I was like, oh, it's a speed pedelec, but we're really talking about a 20 mile per hour top speed on this. And with the smaller wheels, that's fine. These are 20 inch diameter, really interesting the way they've set them up. They're super slick. They're, they're very firm. And when you're coasting, it's, it's super efficient. It's very quiet also and clean. I'm wearing pants today. I'm not gonna get all greasy. Even when you're folding it and stuff, you're not touching parts that are gonna be dirty aside from just some dust and uh, yeah, maybe some water spots or something depending on where you're at. 31.6 millimeter diameter on the seat post. I've raised it way up high because I like the full pedal extension. These are standard 170 millimeter cranks. These are not the stock pedals that come with it. These are plastic folding pedals from VP. Otherwise it would come with these just regular plastic platforms with this nice almost grip tape designed to be very solid, feel good. Also, uh, there's a fender kit. You can buy the fenders separately. There's a light kit. In addition to that B scene light tube, they have Bush and Mueller headlights that are actually gonna help you see where you're going. So just really thought of everything. And I think the wheels are one of the, the highlights on this thing. Will you, maybe we can look at the old bike real quick together. Uh, and then and then the new bike the first time I reviewed this I was like man you know changing the wheels is gonna be a pain or something or changing the tires but you could do it without taking them off taking it off is super easy look at those quick release just levers and then you just pop the wheel off to the side there it is I'm trying to be careful look at this wow I don't know if, if they're magnesium too but they're solid they might be able to accommodate more weight I have listed the max weight back at the website. I don't want to misquote. This is the new design for the wheel. And so they were saying you can double check that it's locked on even quicker. Do, do you know what he's talking about? Yeah, so there's a locking mechanism here. Right now it's in the unlocked position. So what you do is you take this and you turn it. Oh, the there lock. it is, locked and unlocked. Right? So yeah, it's this. The, and what you can do to secure it even more is put a um, M5 screw right there huh. so it will be locked in securely and then no one can take your wheels mm -hmm. back here is the charging port so you can charge the the bike pretty easily for since the g2 they've had a two amp charger pretty compact apparently they're they're moving towards a quick charger like a a four amp charger and that's going to come with some of the newer g3 models they were also doing some promotions where it's like yeah you can get our fender kit and our light kit right now there's also a quick I don't know, a pit stop or what did what did they call that thing where you have the, like the bag with the I'm trying to think about <laughs> oh that's it docking station yeah they have this like platform you fold the bike up put it on the docking station and then you put this cover over it and it's really easy to carry this thing around i was weighing it earlier it's about 36 pounds uh, i weighed it with the double leg kickstand on it so it was like 37.7 so i'm just kind of estimating here just neat that there are so many accessories with this thing. I like the little upgrades that they've done. The touch points, these ergonomic grips feel really good. Quick release up here. And actually the stem can go up and down. See where this rubber cuff is. This isn't a suspension or anything. This is just so you can slide, slide it up and down for reach. And uh, you can also angle this. So if we were to undo this quick release over here, the, the stem can angle forward or back to give you more or less reach. Down here, another area they've improved is they've, I guess they flipped the, the headset a little bit. So the adjustments are down here versus being up at the top and very hard to get to on the older model. Frankly, these are still very similar, very capable bikes. I don't see anything especially wrong with the G2, but it's neat to see how far they've taken it just in general. This bike is it's still kind of a leader in the space, in my opinion one of the nicest looking bikes, but it's also one of the more expensive at $4,499. And that's just to start. Oh, and you know, that's the other thing about it. They upgraded the battery. So it's about 25% larger at almost 300 uh, watt hours now. It's like 296 or something like that. Panasonic cells, that's really high quality. They tend to last a long time and high energy density. And the battery the, is loaded from this point. So you can technically remove the battery, but it sounds like that's mostly for service. Yeah, so I'll be the one servicing your batteries if anything happens. <laughs> so. Tell me more about this. What else have we not seen here? I guess there's this fold out kickstand thing. Yes. So um, once you're removing your wheels, uh -huh. you have this all folded down and you want to flip this right under the bike. What you do is you have this there to stand, just to you know, assist it while it's standing, yeah. uh, once it's in the fold position. It's, it's a bike I like 
you know, just to cruise around on a straightaway. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't really use this for jumps or drops. No, or, no. Uh, uh, Although it does have but, suspension. Yes. It's like about an inch worth of suspension. It's kind of, I'm just trying to put my weight on it a little bit here. You can kind of see it going in and out. I'm not, I'm not that heavy, so it's right. not. The, the cool thing about this bike is it's super comfortable uh, and it's made for people who are even taller than me. You know, I'm 5'10", so you can be 6'2", 6'4", and still enjoy this ride. It's that adjustability up front, yes, yeah, up yeah, and right. out. Yeah. And in the rear, yeah, you're right. I was raising it earlier. I think it's, uh, it's pretty comfortable. Oh, and the front kickstand's interesting. It actually stows forward. So up and out of the way, just completely custom. You can tell that this guy came from the high end space from McLaren and bringing in all that uh, right. uh, just quality refinement. Should we hop on this and, and give it a go? Yeah, absolutely. We rock and cruise around here. From this button here. Oh. All right. So you push and hold, and two lights would blink. Oh yeah, I saw it. So he pushed it, he held it. That's also the battery indicator, right? Yes. So you can do a quick push and it's and gonna you tell you how full it is. See, also, this is your battery meter here telling you how much battery. If you're storing these bikes for a long time, this does have sort of an automatic power down. They've updated the controller. It's supposed to be probably just easier on the batteries, help them last longer with that sleep mode. Uh, but they send it at half full. So if you aren't gonna use the bike for a while, maybe charging it to halfway instead of completely full or, or letting it get really low, that could be. And then the, the lights, when I was uh, trying to get this to work before, you have to be pedaling for that, that front light to work. And then there's these blue dots. There are four modes. There's like low, high, and then there's a couple of flashing modes that can, can come on. Absolutely, so uh, c come on this side. I'm gonna so. do it, we're gonna try to help me out with this? Yeah. yeah. All right, so ready, so yeah it came on look at that thank whoa that's great so we just went from from low to high i think i'm i don't know if i really focused on these hydraulic disc brakes before but i wanted to call out that they have adjustable reach so if you, you're someone who's big hands you can put them way out or if you're small hands you can bring them in uh, they have interesting size rotors i think it's like 138 millimeter which is just i've never really seen that before and i asked for all the like who makes this who makes that and a lot of this is just so proprietary the bike is very custom and you, i mean you can tell how polished it is how clean it is you pay a premium for that but you do get a great warranty too oh hey there are the those are the little blue dots we were talking about just a minute ago yeah okay and then over here see down to the higher gears yep so you got those three dots and then it resets itself yeah it's like automatic shifting in a way okay right, let's, let's let's do this we got our friend over there mark sparks hanging out <laughs> cruising around like a little bike club here do you want to go through the park like this time we turn left and over the green yeah we're gonna take a left and we're gonna go around the park lead it on as you can hear I'm just going to start pedaling. So a little bit of a delay, but this uses a combination cadence and torque sensor. And it's pretty, it's pretty neat just to be able to pedal and then as you let off, it automatically switches gears, the motor kicks in. I'm not doing anything up here at all. I'm just riding right now. Feels pretty steady for 20 inch wheels. Go for it. And I can tell his is a little louder than mine. Maybe it's because this one's still newer. The motor makes a bit of a noise, a little bit of electronic chirping as we switch gears. And then that, that dashboard, so I guess that's telling me like my speed. You don't get uh, the standard speed readout, like you don't know exactly how many miles per hour you're going on this. Here's that like Cylon view I was talking about before with the LED dance. Kind of cool. And then there's a charger back there on the ground. Pretty compact. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the pannier bag for the front. Let me 
hang that off. Just sweet. Matches. Pretty good size. And it's reinforced on the back. Would, would that just hang right off the bars or? <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. Very cool. Okay, so I'm back at the shop. I wanted to introduce you to Damon. You're the owner of Green Path Electric Bikes, right? Yes, I am. How long have you guys been here? We've been around 10 years now. 10 years, yeah. I mean, you got all these different bikes, a bunch of different brands. You know, it's it's a busy afternoon because it's Saturday, yes. and we started folding the bike down. I just wanted to show you know how compact it gets, and we would still fold the the stem down and take the seat post off, but just getting the wheels off is super easy. And we were gonna put it in the docking station back here, but I thought you know this is actually kind of neat to show. It has wheels on the bottom, so this thing rolls around like luggage. You would basically set the bike onto this platform, including the wheels, and then there's this awesome cover and it just zips down like this. It's even got some extra, I guess it's fasteners and things and a zippered pouch. Just a really cool, sort of a modular system. It's I, waterproof also. It's, is it's waterproof? Yes, it's waterproof also. That's awesome. Go Cycle went ahead and they, they concentrated on the, uh, um, the marine people, the ones who use boaters, the campers and stuff like that, and also urban people. They made a combined whole new type of, uh, um, uh, it's a new category, a bike. Um, it is the most, probably the most advanced bike on the planet mechanically, even though there's other ones out there, you know, from electronically. Yeah. The, the bike sits on the same wheelbase as a full you mentioned that yes. to me yeah that's we were measuring we the wheelbase measured, right. which is like from the axle to axle sort of yes right yes. and it's longer it's almost we were measuring it for some of your other bikes and yeah i was surprised how long it is given how small the tire diameter is and so that makes it more stable is it makes it more, it makes it much more comfortable and much stable you have the 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 bike was designed by the same guy who designed mclaren yeah, so yeah, Richard Thorpe, yes, right? That's you know, and he took his ideas of of automotive comfort. You're able to go ahead. The bike is designed for multi people, multi sized people. It is has many different adjustments that any somebody five two to six five could sit on it. Yeah. Um, it is. It even you know. Remember, I was telling you about it. It's designed for boaters. It actually has marine quality bolts against salt air rust. Awesome. That has been one of my uh, um, uh, major um, customers are boaters who... Yeah, I, I you're right down by the water. Right down by the water. Yeah. And, you know, what happens is I usually buy, um, you know, I'll usually sell one bike at a time, mm -hmm. but eventually it's always two. Yeah. You so know. you're doing a great job. Right, right. Again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, for the full specs on the Go Cycle, including standover height and... We were talking about wheelbase and some of those other stats. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Again, we're at Green Path in New York. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll see you next time. Good. Thank you. Okay, so I mentioned auto shifting before. Now, if I want to, I can manually shift, kind of override. You do need to ease off or it's not going to shift if you have a lot of weight on the, on the system. Go. I'm in the highest gear right now. Smooth pedal cadence. It's comfortable. Three gears is really all you need for this bike. And I find my shelf, I find myself shifting down a lot because I like the easier gears. Okay, and now I'm trying to use the throttle and because I'm moving, it's kicking in. We did enable it just for this review. It's nice. So back at the website, I listed this as class one and class two because technically, you know, depending on where you live, it could be pedal assist only, or you could have that throttle. One area that's a little bit tricky for me is like trying to get that, that front folded kickstand with my, with my shoes. I often actually just reach down and use my fingers to get it. Okay, I was going to put my camera on the seat post or somewhere, but it's so thick. The tubing on this is, is just overbuilt, and so that's not possible. So instead, what I'm going to do is hand off the G3 to Jonathan. He's going to ride around. I'm going to put the camera up real close on the different parts, and then we're going to switch and show the suspension. And you were telling me that you haven't had any, any problems with this, right? Yeah, as far as the bike goes, I haven't had anyone come back saying, hey, my motor's broke or anything like that. This is a really, really... 
uh, overbuilt system so far. Uh, no one has come back, even with the G1, the G2s, with any issues. No problems. Yeah. That's sweet. And the other thing I was noticing that they used to have some extra cables and wiring. Now it's all internally routed, so it's just super clean. Yeah. That's that's sweet, man. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the camera. <laughs> oh, just come back here, man. Just right next to me. I'm impressed that he climbed the hill like that. Okay, go for it. Bring it back. We're good. Well, that's cool. Normally, I don't think you'd be riding off-road quite like this, but it's neat to see it handle it just fine. And there we go. We didn't get too dirty, did we? Nope. No. Where's the turn signal, man? There he goes, right turn, turn signal. It's fun. For a 20-inch wheel bike, you know, it's fairly stable and comfortable. The wheels are pretty, you know, a little bit more stable with the fatter diameter on those tires. Well, that was a lot of fun. Jonathan, thank you so much for taking me to like the coolest place on this most beautiful day in Brooklyn. That is the, G, the Go Cycle G3. Yep. Plus, Go yeah, a little look at the, at the G2. And I noticed you had this cool helmet on. This is the Lumos, right? Yes, the Lumos helmet. Can you tell me how this thing works? Cause I, you, know, you got LEDs, I'm all about safety. All right, so this is a Bluetooth device. Um, it has Bluetooth capabilities actually. Uh, so you bind it together with this, these, uh, this section right it's here. It's like a turn signal thing? Yep. Left, right? And then once you get it all binded. Oh yeah, he's turning left. Going to the left. Going to the right. Even during the day, it's pretty, well, and on the front too. So people know, I can just imagine someone's chasing you and you're like, I'm turning left. And then you <laughs> take the, take the yeah. alternative. This is, this is kind of neat. I have heard about this and someone told me if you stop really fast too, it like blinks or something. Yes. So, uh, the sensor is here and the G, there's a G meter in here. Hmm. I've heard. So like when an I accelerometer. Stop abruptly, when I stop abruptly, uh, the light in the back right can be a little bit bright. Lights up. Yeah. That's cool for a bike that already emphasizes safety and gives you the different options. Uh, my helmet does not have any any lights, but it's a light color. Right. And so this is just, this future tech, it's so cool to see this. Again, thanks to Green Path Electric here in Brooklyn and uh, full specs at the website. We'll see you next time.